conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Right then, on that note, we're going to thank you for dropping in, Will. Uh, Doc, thanks for bringing another uh, uh, very uh, inspiring guest on the show. Hopefully, we'll get him back and we can talk deeper. There were some questions that came out of this that we definitely don't have time to talk about. I, I sort of responded to it, uh, but there are some sisters out there, man, who are hurting. Uh, and I know there are some brothers, we don't like to admit it. So we're not going to get on and actually talk about how we feel about what we've been through and the pain we feel. Uh, but the uh, young lady talked about real briefly, and I'm going to shut, shut up and get off of here, about first wife syndrome in the sense of men who use their first wives to build their empire mm. and then leave them to marry the woman of their dreams. And, and my wow. response was real simple. I'm not supportive of that. Who you build with is who you live with, who you stay with and you connect it to. Again, that's a bad narrative. That creates the distrust that we're dealing with. You know, who who, who I build with is who I want to be with. Uh, the problem is there's this idea that there's this, this uh, utopia of love because of the romantic novels, the romance movies. And so everybody's searching for this utopia of love. Nobody wants to build because building ain't easy. Building requires longevity and commitment. Building requires some ups and some downs and some difficult moments. Building requires being able to look at somebody with the side eye and still work with them that day. See, those are the things that we don't want to talk about because we are living in this idea that this is how it looks. Well, no, if you're going to spend each and every day of your life with somebody, you're going to have moments where you're looking at them and you don't like them. Right. And then you got to determine how you're going to handle them when you don't like them, because that's going to be the reflection of your character. Is how I treat you when I'm not feeling you is who I really am. Mm. Because if I'm sitting up and I'm getting what I want from you, yeah, I'm going to treat you how you want to be treated because I'm getting something that I want. It's when I'm looking at you and I'm in a moment where you're not giving me what I need and I still treat you the way I promised I would treat you when we started it. Because I'm not treating you based on my feelings. I'm treating you based on an obligation, a contract, a covenant, and a commitment. And the commitment was, we're going to do this until we end it, until it's all over and we're going to fight through it. We don't have that. Now, nobody has to stay in. Nobody has to fight through it. Nobody has to stick anything out anymore. So the moment that it becomes uncomfortable, it's where your threshold is. Whenever I reach my threshold, I'm gone. And that's a problem. Everybody's hitting thresholds and bouncing. And nobody's sitting up saying we're going to build, we're going to do something because we des our kids deserve to see us hand them something collectively that they can work with. Also, our kids need to be able to see what it's like to endure. I'm not saying staying abusive relationships. I'm not saying staying in relationships where your spouse is mishandling you, disrespecting you, uh, doing not. I'm saying that there is no perfect situation. Everybody's not going to flow like you're going to flow. And women and men, we're built completely different. Women, women's brains flow from left to right. They're intuitive. They're spiritual. They feel things. Men, we are front to back. Our identity is built on what we do. We are going to be justified in our work. I'm not talking about jobs. I'm talking about our work. I'm talking about the thing that matters to us, the thing we're passionate about. And if she doesn't know how to plug into that and feed that, yeah, there are going to be a lot of bad moments. If you don't know how to lean into and provide what she needs to settle her insecurities, it's going to be a lot of bad moments. But if you really love one another, you find one another. Hmm. So that's the thing. So for the person that's asking that, yes, SJ, both sides are right now afraid of being taken advantage of because everybody's about self now. So you can't trust that when you get in it, the other person is in it the way you're in it because you don't know how long they have before they hit their threshold. Right. So everybody's like, man, you know, so now it's all about 
Who going to bounce first? I'm not going to let them break my heart. So now we sabotage it just so we ain't the one to get hurt. We, we running and chasing stuff. So my thing is, look, we got to get to a point where we're starting to live the narrative that we want to see in our community. Talking about it, lecturing on it, all that doesn't mean anything because our children are emulating what they see. Mm -hmm. And if they see a situation where we have a 50 plus percent divorce rate mm -hmm. and all we've got to do to, to, to get that divorce is tell the judge that we're not getting along. Irreconcilable differences. Mm -hmm. I don't have to show any violation of the covenant. I just got to show I ain't happy. Wow. And that's that. So look, I had to touch on it because she had a very valid point and I didn't want to leave her hanging. I answered it in the chat, but I wanted to answer it so more people will hear it when they read it. And I'm look like some people stuck around for it. So that's good. Again, Will, thank you for stopping by, man. I love uh, that the, the, uh, uh, the spoken word you share with us on the way out. Doc, we'll talk soon. Everybody else, thanks for stopping in. It's awesome having you guys visit with us, and we'll see you next week. Again, yeah. thank y'all so much.